for newly diagnosed metastatic colorectal cancer patients, one of the first things that we do is to obtain a molecular profile. And this, at a minimum, includes a KRAS, NRAS, which we'll uh, use the term RAS uh, to lump together, BRAF, HER2, uh, looking for amplifications, and an MSI status. And there's a number of ways that that can be done, including immunohistochemistry, PCR, or next generation sequencing. This information is important to help uh, understand the best treatment options for the patients. And I think it increasingly there's data suggesting this is important to have at the very earliest uh, time possible in the, the time course of a patient's uh, metastatic disease treatment continuum. NTRAC fusions are also seen in uh, metastatic colorectal cancer. Um, we do see that they are uh, present um, more commonly in, uh, in patients that have uh, MSI high uh, tumors, but still are present, um, albeit under 1% frequency in other population as well. So that's something that is uh, performed typically as part of the initial biomarker assessment. Although this commonly uh, is um, done with uh, different assays in some settings, and it's one that we would uh, encourage, but uh, if there's tissue available. And I'd certainly prioritize the uh, NRAS, KRAS, BRAF, HER2 amplification, and MSI assessment above uh, fusion testing. So we know that there are certain biomarkers that we already know that is actionable, uh, such as the KRAS, the NRAS, the BRAF, the TRAC fusion. However, there are other predictive biomarkers that's, that's slowly emerging. The problem with these biomarkers are that these are very rare. So for example, there is a ROS1 fusion, um, there is a RET fusion, uh, and there's an ALK fusion. Now, usually patients with ROS1 fusion are the patient with, with poor prognosis. Now, these are all less than 1%, to say the least. However, uh, studies have shown that if you do have this fusion, uh, that there are drugs able to target those, especially the red fusion. We know there's a blue 67 compound, and there's lots of common that's currently out there that's been currently being used for thyroid and lung cancer. And the incidence of red fusion in colon cancer is, you know, is less than 1%. However, if you find that in your molecular profiling, you will be able to possibly get the drug on a trial off label, and the response rate seems to be very, very high. Other predictive marker that we are sort of looking at at this moment um, is, a, um, is poly, polysomatic mutations. Uh, these are the patients that are microsatellite stable, uh, but tends to have high tumor burden. And this happens, this somatic mutation occurs mostly in young patients. And that's one of the biomarkers that's, that's evolving for possible uh, response to checkpoint inhibitors. So that's something that's on the future, that's ongoing right now. And other things is a BRCA mutation. Usually a BRCA mutation in colon cancer is associated with, with BRCA1. But now we have PARP inhibitors that is currently now approved as a maintenance therapy in pancreatic cancer. So if you have a patient with a BRCA1 mutation uh, in colon cancer, so there's a PARP inhibitor, something that we, we could use as well. So these are some of the predictive markers that are emerging. Once again, incidence very low, but if we don't check it, we'll never find them. So I, I think that's why for me it's important to test the whole panel at the beginning.